as uh, the Railers get the win here tonight, 48-35. Uh, Josh, uh, some quick uh, shooting stats. Yeah, the first four, uh, let's go through the Railers. And they were uh, 20 of 46 from the field for 44%. We shot 7 of 21 in, uh, in the, sec in the uh, game for threes, but we were 3 of 7 in the second half. One, just 1 of 3 from the free throw line for 33%. The, uh, the Railers had 20 rebounds and 11 of them offensive. Just keeping uh, plays alive. The Railers had 13 assists on four turnovers. So good job by the Railers of uh, handling the basketball. Did a good job of finding guys open, especially in that second half where we were finding guys and we were converting on layups. We started to put Gavin at that free throw line and he either scored or was able to find a three or was able to find Isaiah underneath for uh, for some easy baskets. Joined now by Coach Neil Alexander. Railers with the victory tonight, 48-35. Coach, uh, boy, this was uh, – it's a hard one to figure what happened with this one. The Railers and Rochester, uh, you know, battled a little bit in the first half. And then, uh, you know, one of the things we talked about is if there was a caption of things that maybe weren't going right in this tournament, even though you're 3-0, and it's the missed layups. And uh, you talked about it, I believe, over in Jacksonville, how the missed layups hurt us. And right there before the half, we miss a layup on a fast break. They go down and hit a three, a quick five-point swing. And that's what started them on a 10-0 run that eventually saw them take the lead. But after that, the Railers picked it up and come away with the win. Well, we, we talked about a lot of things at half, but uh, the main things we had was uh, I thought Gavin was spending too much time on the perimeter and we had to get him inside. And the second thing is, is we, we needed ball pressure all over the court, not just, uh, you know, playing our normal contained defense. And I think we forced him into some turnovers and things, which uh, helped us get down and get some baskets. Yeah, you're right, Coach. The, uh, the top three especially, you had Perry out there a lot. Uh, Ebelair and Cook uh, really were pressuring their guards, and even in even when we weren't getting traps, we were getting tipaways or steals, and uh, and then that would that would lead lead to a steal, and we got a, we got out on the break a couple times too. So uh, credit a lot of those guys for uh, the pressure, and you saw where the Railers were getting burned a lot in the first half, and even to start the third quarter was the baseline, oh. uh, baseline 15 footers, baseline threes. Once we started to put the pressure on them, they couldn't get the ball there. They didn't find a baseline, and that's you, you know if they're going to play on that half or try to play down on the baseline and that's what you want to do versus a zone you want the ball on the baseline to flatten out the zone because you get so many options out of it once you get there uh, but we wanted to after that we tried to force them to play at the timeline where they couldn't find the short porch and I think that paid off for us. Coach uh, the other night uh, over in Rochester when the Railers beat Jacksonville uh, one of the key plays was Jordan Perry hitting a three Again tonight, the senior delivered. Uh, he put the Railers back up when they were down 25-24. Perry hit another big three. It's good to have those seniors that know when they need to take that big shot, and tonight he hit it as well. Yeah, he hit it, and it was a quick shot. Uh, uh, it's one of those that, oh, no, 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 good shot. You know, <laughs> one of those from the bench. But, uh, it, you know, it was a big shot. I, I think we were down two, and that put us back up one, and I don't think we trailed after that. Coach, 11 offensive rebounds tonight, uh, you know, and a lot of guys don't get an offensive rebound credited to them with a tip out, but we had a lot of tip aways, uh, tip outs that we got the ball. Uh, I remember Coach Steers for Rochester calling a timeout that he was frustrated with his team on not going after the ball. Looked like tonight, rather than not Monday, we were after the rebounds. We got a lot of those loose balls. Our guys were diving on the court for those 50-50 uh, balls and made a big difference. I thought we, we, we played quick, except Aaron. Uh, yeah, more he concerned, was hurt, yeah. More concerned about that. Uh, because he makes us, uh, you know, uh, people have to change because of him. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see how he goes. He, he wasn't moving very quick. And hopefully by not playing, I don't know how many minutes he got. But, uh, you know, we got him out. And, uh, 16. Uh, 16. Uh, hopefully he can get some rest. And we'll see what we do with him tomorrow. We may just stretch him out and try to get that thing loosened up so he'll be ready Friday. Yeah, that was a big thing in the game, Coach. Uh, Hop was really a passer from the free throw line in the first half. You moved Gavin in there, and he was a he was a scorer and then also a passer, too. He looked to score first, and that opened it up. Uh, we got a lot more layups. I think the Railers uh, in uh, two-point lane were 10 of 20 from uh, inside the arc, which was a, a big thing that sealed that uh, victory late in the game. Yeah, I thought uh, Gavin done a nice job getting to the basket, and uh, you know, uh, Isaiah was down there, and, uh, but we, we still gave up too many baselines. You know, mm -hmm. our defense can't do that, but it, it kind of taught the coaching staff something. If we're giving up that baseline 
offense, and we've, we've got to push our defense forward a little bit to try to get them off the baseline. Coach, uh, another key three uh, for someone who we don't uh, uh, really rely on too much scoring-wise, uh, Peyton Ebeler, there was a lot of opportunities where he was open, and they just kept sloughing off and sloughing off, and then eventually he took it and he hit it, and it was good to see Peyton kind of open that up a little bit for him to get the three from the top of the key. Yeah, he hit that one, and... Uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't even know. I think he hit a couple of them tonight. But, you know, I watch him play. He's fun to watch at the defensive end. He really gets down and creates problems for people. He's quick and really makes things happen. And, you know, tonight uh, we don't like keeping him on the point as much. That's what the, the luxury we have with Aaron Hopp is, you know, we substitute. We can move Aaron up there and, and you know, drop Aaron, or, uh, uh, Peyton down on the wing to, to play the wing defense. So. Uh, you know, with Aaron out, that creates a little bit of a uh, numbers game for us. Well, Coach, uh, Friday night, 8 o'clock, uh, we would assume maybe by Chatham would win tonight here against Jacksonville, the game right after us. Uh, so that would put the Railers at 3-0 and and then uh, also Chatham at 3-0. and Big game Friday night at Chatham. The place will be rocking. Oh, it will be. It'll be, a, you know, and hopefully we'll have our – uh, six man there and uh, help us out because th th they're a good basketball team. Cole Harper is one of the best players around and uh, he's playing exceptionally well right now. They've got shooters. They, they feel pretty good about themselves and uh, you know that that's a bad combination. Then you go play them on their home floor and uh, uh, you know hopefully we can go down there and play and then uh, MacArthur will be saying the same thing for Saturday night. We've got to go play them on their home floor. Coach, if I remember seeing the stats from uh, the other night correctly, Cole Harper, I believe he had 16 rebounds. I think it was something, some unusually high number. But, yeah, he is one guy that uh, uh, you can't take a look at Chatham Glen Glenwood and say, well, Peyton Allen's not there anymore, so they're not as good. Cole Harper is just as dangerous. He, he is. He's a dangerous in a different way, and that's inside the paint. And, you know, he's such a great passer, sees the floor very well, and, uh, you know, he makes a, he makes their team go. He's, he's going to rebound. But uh, another thing they got is their guards are dribble driving. And, uh, you know, when they dribble drive, that opens uh, rebounding lanes up for Cole Harper. And, uh, you know, you think that he's getting all those rebounds, but somebody's helping him get those by doing other things to, to force the defense to, to play a different way. All right, Coach, uh, we will let you go. Congratulations on the win on this trip here to the uh, – the new look, uh, Robert Witt Gymnasium, and, uh, you know, Josh talked about it. It's just so much lighter. You know, you've got the light wood. You've got all the lights here. And he said, you know, as a shooter, this is the kind of place he'd like to come. Yeah, it, it's they really did it right. It's uh, I was excited about coming over here and seeing the place, and, uh, you know, it, it's really a, a nice place, and, uh, you know, they've redid things. Uh, they made it nice for you guys to set up here where nobody bothers you. And, <laughs> yeah, except uh, the cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well Oh, yeah, I can see now when they <laughs> get, get up on their shoulders. Yeah. Uh, you can't see the game. Well, move to the middle of the floor. <laughs> yeah. All right, Coach, congratulations on this one, and uh, we'll see you Friday night and uh, what will probably be a very hostile crowd down at Chatham as uh, the Railers head down to take on the Titans. Well, I hope we can, we can match them on the floor, but also uh, it's a great help when we can match them in the stands as well with our great fan support. So hopefully we'll see everybody Friday night. All right, Railers win by 13. Coach, congratulations, and we'll see you Friday. Okay, thank you. Railers with a 48-35 win. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball.